All right, everybody. How we doing? Looking at Gators XUV side by sides, March eighth this week. Um, get everything going here. Week eight, or week of March eighth, Gators XUVs, side by sides. Uh, Gators the name brand. <clears throat> you got um, Kubota, Kawasaki, Honda. I don't know, a few other ones. Um, the Gators what we have at the school. Um, Gators what we're going to be talking about. Um, we'll go through the safety aspects like we normally do. We'll go through a little bit of service and maintenance. Nothing major there, just something specific to XUVs and side-by-sides. Uh, we'll go into a little bit of the operations. <clears throat> a lot of this stuff, you know, quite frankly, is uh, redundant to some of the things that we've already talked about. Um, but, you know, a little bit unique in the fact of what I think people confuse a, an XUV side by side with um, operating a car uh, or a regular truck. <clears throat> it's not the same. Um, they're not meant to do the same types of things. Um, these vehicles are not meant to drive on the road uh, where that's what a, a car and a truck is designed to do. Um, so you need to treat it different, um, you need to think about it different in that aspect. Um, and that's what we'll, that's what we'll kind of talk about. That's what we'll relate the safety mechanisms to and the operations and um, the one, the one little slide that I have on the service aspect. <clears throat> so we'll kind of get into it. Um, we talked about supervisor responsibilities and operator responsibilities before, right? So a supervisor has a responsibility to make sure operators of uh, the machine are thoroughly trained, uh, be sure to establish any safety procedures, you know, operators, right? Operators have responsibilities as well, reading the owner's manual, the operator's manual, <clears throat> and any other training material, become familiar with the safe operation of the equipment. Uh, you should be trained as well, you know, ask your supervisor, Ask somebody else to train you. Uh, be, be aware of children. We're going to talk a little bit about children throughout the um, safety aspects here. Um, it's not the same as <clears throat> putting a child in a uh, car seat and putting them in a vehicle. They don't. Car seat's not illegal in a in a in a vehicle like this. So you know you can't do that. Uh, you know, so a, a child, someone smaller than an adult, is not going to sit in the in the seat properly. Even though you sit in the seat properly, you don't fit in the seat properly. Safe the seat belt doesn't fit properly. You can't reach the hand um, holds properly. So just as far as a child in this type of view, utility vehicle is not <clears throat> it's not the same as putting them in a in a regular vehicle. That's kind of one aspect that it's not, not the thing, it's not the same. Okay. Um, the owner, the user can prevent and is responsible for accidents um, or injuries that occur. Can operate the machine as an open un unobstructed area under the direction of an experienced operator when training, right? Be out in the open, <clears throat> large area where you can make mistakes, not turn the vehicle over, nice flat area. Okay, operating the vehicle. Uh, goes back to the owner's manual, right? We always kind of go back to it. Some information out of the owner's manual come from uh, the slides here. So, you know, we, we read it through tractors, mowers, chainsaws, all that type of stuff, right? Always kind of goes back to the operator's manual. Okay, the tires are designed on this vehicle 
for operation off road use. Okay, on a on a pavement, uh, on a paved surface, it um, it affects the handling. Right, you skid more. Uh, they have a deep tread. That tread is designed to dig in, dig into the mud, dig into the dirt. Uh, and when there's nothing for it to dig into on a pavement, it's just kind of skidding across the top. Okay, so you need to travel a little slower, <clears throat> slower turns, um, no sudden stops or any of those types of things. Slow down and be careful around traffic. <clears throat> this this uh, this utility vehicle doesn't have the same safety mechanisms that your car has, as far as rear view mirrors, uh, as far as side mirrors, those types of things. So you're you're accustomed to looking in those things when you're driving a vehicle. Uh, you don't have those in a utility vehicle, so you need to be aware of your surroundings. You need to be aware of what's in front of you, beside you, uh, your blind spots, those types of things. Uh, you know, you're not driving down a five-lane highway where it's all open, right? You're in the trees, you're in the muck, you're whatever, so you need to pay attention to those objects that are around you. <clears throat> Passengers always use the handholds. Okay, make sure that your passenger has the proper equipment on as well. Uh, use your seat belts. Uh, sit in the center of the seat, right? So as I'm sitting here leaning on the, on the chair that I'm in, right? You want to sit in the center of your seat, <clears throat> seat belt on properly, okay? Because as you're, as you're moving around in that vehicle and it's jostling you, you know, you can hit your head. On some of those side rails, the rollover protection device, whatever it might be. Um, you know, we talk about helmets a little bit later on down the road too. So, those are all those are all components of a, of a utility vehicle. Okay, when you're sitting here on the side, you're leaning, and that um, uh, vehicle hits a bump, uh, runs over something, whatever the case is. You know, you're you're gonna you're gonna jostle. You're gonna you're gonna hurt your. You have potential to hurt yourself a whole lot more than when you're sitting straight. You're strapped in, you're using the handrails, or you're holding onto the steering wheel. Okay. <clears throat> That's why they recommend that children don't utilize these things as well, um, because a child can't sit in that seat properly to be protected properly. Uh, check debris around the, the engine as you're running these things through mud and muck and trees and branches and blah, 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 blah. Right. There's things that can get on it, stick on it. <clears throat> Make sure you, that we don't have anything obstructing. Whether that's around the exhaust system, the muffler, around your foot pedals, all those types of things. Know the location of your controls. Know what, how they operate. Know what it is. Okay. No different than getting in a tractor, getting in a skid steer, and saying, "What does this button do? What does that button do?" Blah 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 blah. You know, just because it looks like a, a car, looks like something that you can operate, you turn it on, you put it in gear, you hit the gas, and you go. There are other things on that vehicle, on this utility type vehicle, that you need to know what the operations are, okay? We also have a gross vehicle weight limit um, and a gross vehicle weight rating uh, for a vehicle like this. So you can tow a load, uh, you can put a load in the back of the bed, all those types of things, but they have, they're just like a vehicle, like a passenger vehicle um, that has a vehicle uh, weight restraints as well, okay? Don't leave it unattended. Um, turn around in level areas and, you know, no headphones, those types of things when you're operating things. <clears throat> a little specifics about parking. Stop on a level surface, not on a slope. Fully lower the cargo box and any attachments, whether you have an attachment on the front, cargo box on the back. Put the parking brake on, stop the engine, remove the key, um, wait for everything to kind of settle, stop before you get out, okay, and then disconnect the negative battery cable, you know, if you're going to leave it for a long period of time. <clears throat> and then we talk about a little bit about the children, right? So, you know, a lot of times you think, you know, a, a um, vehicle like this is fun, um, it's enjoying, you know, let's, let's take that apart because you can have one of these at the house. You could have grown up with one of these and that's fine, right? No problem. When you're talking about work, that's what we're referring to, a job site. Um, they're just not, it's, it's not allowed, okay? Uh, there's too many, too many potentials for accidents um, with, with kids around. With kids around, they, they, they move, they move around a lot. You need to make sure you know where they're at. You need to make sure that um, you have an eye on them, that they're not in a vehicle. They can't sit in the bed of the vehicle. All these types of things, all these are, 
<clears throat> or all, all that all that aspect, right? So, you know, um, the seat belts installed, you know, is not designed to restrain a child. Um, you know, all these all these things listed on this slide are kind of what we're what, what we're talking about. Um, so I'm not going to read all these all these things, but you know, in a vehicle, you can put someone in a car seat. That car seat is strapped into the car, and then there is a seat belt for the child, independent of the, the vehicle. You don't have that on a utility vehicle. Uh, you can't put a car seat in a utility vehicle. So that's why, from a job standpoint, um, job site, a working standpoint, children are not allowed on, on these vehicles. So those just pay attention to that. I like to have fun. I got a kid. I have a I have side by side. <clears throat> Work related. This is what we're talking about. At home, I get it. You know what I mean? I, I get that you probably um, have ridden in some of these things before. Have them on the have them on, at the house. I, I, I get all that. Um, but from a from a safety standpoint, from a job related duty. The children just aren't allowed on these vehicles. Avoid excessive speeds, wear a helmet. Okay, um, there's a video later on. <clears throat> if it worked properly, that, um, you know, it, 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 this, these can be fun vehicles, um, but you need, to, you need to wear a helmet, you need to be strapped in uh, with safe belt properly, uh, all those types of things. Uh, always travel at a safe speed that is safe and proper for the terrain. Whether you're carrying the load, if you have a load on it, whether you're towing a load, all those types of things, you know. Um, you know, there are safety guidelines when you're towing a load down a street that's a four-lane street, as level as it can be. Um, you know, there's safety safety standards, right? You need to try to step, strap everything down, tie it in good, make sure you're not overweight. Um, all those things apply here. Yet the diff, the main difference is, is you're you're taking these through wooded areas through uneven terrain. So there's even more of a safety um, handling, um, all those types of things that you need to pay attention to. So <clears throat> even though you may be able to put a thousand pounds in a payload in the back cargo bed, um, doesn't mean you want to do that and run over all of these bumps and hills and up these valleys or you know down these valleys and up these slopes and on a side sail slope like that with a thousand on it, right? You may want to reduce that. And they recommend you know half weight a little later on in the in the in the slides. So you know th those are the things you have to <clears throat> pay attention. This is this is a very similar vehicle, yet it's used differently. So you have to think about it differently. Okay. Uh, use caution when you're operating in reverse. Slow speed. Do not make sharp turns. Um, you know. Once again, tra travel in excessive speeds on slopes, you're, you're asking for um, rollovers and tips. Because once again, this is a utility vehicle that you are going to have on slopes and valleys and dips and views and blah, 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 blah. So pay attention to the, the, the speed that you're operating these at. Now, avoiding tipping. <clears throat> Accidents result in serious death can occur from tipping. Observe the practices to help that, right? Drive slowly when turning. Uh, reduce the speed and exercise extreme caution on the slopes. Uh, do not overload the vehicle and avoid shifting the load. Uh, do not stop to start suddenly on a hill. Uh, stay alert for the holes in the rocks. Keep away from drop-offs and ditches. Keep the front wheel straight at the crest. <clears throat> so when you have a load um, or, or not loaded on a vehicle like this and you're going up a hill, you know, the, the center of gravity shifts on a vehicle not, not just like this, but on any vehicle. Okay, so if you get that, if you get it on a on an incline, you know the center of gravity. So now all of a sudden, those wheels um, on the front don't quite have the same weight as they did on a level playing field. So that's going to affect the handling of how your vehicle operates. Okay, and if you have a load on the back of it, whether you're trailering or you just have a cargo load, you know that's going to affect it even more. So those are the things you need to pay attention to. <clears throat> Using your seatbelt properly. Today we have a rollover protection device, like we do on a, like we do on a tractor on this. Um, you know, if you're not in that seatbelt right, if you're not using the handrails, 
uh, hand holds and you're not holding on to the seat belt properly, right? You're gonna, you have a greater risk of damage um, and injury when the, when the rollover happens, right? <clears throat> so if you have your seat belt on, you're in the center of the seat, you're where you need to be, a rollover happens, a tipping happens, hopefully that rollover protection structure does its job, you've done your job, everybody walks away, right? You don't have your seat belt on properly, you're not in your, your seat um, straight, you're cockeyed, whatever the case is, your hands are all over the place. Now those are the things that, um, that, that happen. Doesn't matter if the rollover protection device does its job, you didn't do your job, so now, now we have injury. <clears throat> okay, inspect those seat belts, inspect, in, inspect the mounting hardware, you know, make sure those, those handholds are, are, are tight. Um, be careful of your heavy clothing, right? That can interview with the positioning of the seat belt. Um, you know, you could have a big heavy jacket on, whatever the case is, just know there's that much more padding. Um, you know, you need to adjust properly according, uh, according to the safety um, manual. Okay, so a couple things before you drive, right? Um, you know, this is a dirty machine, goes through, goes through a lot of different type of stuff, okay? So, you know, make sure it's, uh, make sure the pedals are clear, okay? So you don't want to be going to hit the brake and there's a stick behind the brake and now the brake doesn't work. Check all that stuff out. You know, make sure everything is, um, it, it is clean and, and operable right, all that type of stuff. Make sure your lights, your shields, all those things are, uh, are good. Check your tires. <clears throat> Okay, anchor your loads, um, all these things that are that, that, that you normally do, um, it's, it's heightened that you do them in a vehicle like this because this vehicle goes through more rigorous terrain. Um, even though the vehicle is built for it, um, there's a different wear and tear on a vehicle like this than it is just driving down the road, okay? <clears throat> Transport your load safety, safely. Make sure the load is evenly distributed. Uh, do not load above the guard. There's a load guard that's behind you. Um, that if you stop, that load doesn't come on your, your back. <clears throat> okay, you load above that guard and the load is up here above your head. If you stop or you're on a, on a decline, whatever the case is, that load shifts, it comes, it comes back on you. Okay, so don't load above that load guard in the back of the cargo bed, okay? Um, the same thing with the front attachments, you know, pay attention to the front attachments um, when, you're, when you're going through rough terrain, okay? If you have a snow plow on the front and you're going through a bunch of <clears throat> hills and valleys and things like that, that snow plow is going to stop, dig in, it's going to jostle more, you know, be, be attention, be, be, be paying attention to, to how those um, attachments are being, uh, the word I'm trying to say is damaged, but you know, you, you don't damage it until it's damaged. But you know, when, they, when you have something, when you have an attachment on the front and it's taking a beating, um, you know, it's hurting that attachment because you're going over rough terrain. So if there's a way to load that attachment in the cargo bed and attach that attachment when you get to where you need to use it is ideal. Um, otherwise, you, you know, that, that, that attachment is going to take a beating to get through all the terrain that you're, that you're going through in order to get there. So those are the things you need to think about on that aspect. So towing loads. Towing loads is very similar to towing loads that we've talked about in the, <clears throat> with the truck and the trailer. Okay, so I'm not going to kill you with boredom on that because we've talked about a lot of that stuff. Okay, the, the, the main thing to take out of this is when you're towing a load in a utility vehicle, more than likely you're not towing it down the street. If you were doing that, you would do it with a truck, right? So you're towing a load over rough terrain, in the woods, up and down slopes, on the side hill, all those types of things. So you need to pay specific attention to the weights, <clears throat> how you're tying it in, um, all those types of things, you know, making sure that the kids aren't in there. No, no kids around when, when you're doing those types of things. Make sure your hitch is proper. Make sure it's, it, it's securely fastened in there right, okay? And you're going up and down a, a, a major slope like that, right? You know, make sure, it's, make sure you have everything. Make sure you're being safe. Make sure you're not going too fast. All those, 
all those types of things. You guys take a look at these that are listed, um, you know, but that's kind of what we're, we're hitting on a lot, okay? Uh, don't shift to neutral as you're going down a hill in a vehicle like this. This vehicle does not <clears throat> quite have a, um, a downshift like a manual truck or a manual car would on a downshift, um, but it does, it does operate still something similar. It still helps you slow up that vehicle and it doesn't take complete um, pressure and put it onto the brakes, braking system itself, right? So keep it in gear, utilize the brake itself and utilize the, um, the parking brake, the emergency brake when you're going down a hill. It's, that's what this vehicle is designed to do. <clears throat> Riding on rough terrain, wear a helmet, you know? Uh, use existing trails, try not to get off over, you know, a new trail. Uh, look ahead, know what you're doing out here, right? Uh, keeping your front wheel straight, right? So when you're up and down and cockeyed or whatever, your front wheels are can get off the ground. You, you don't have any traction up there, right? So you need to pay attention to how it's how it's crawling through those areas. Okay, we talked a little bit about this before. Okay, you know you you want to make sure that you're um, climbing and descending the hill properly. You know using using the brakes when you're going down the slopes, uh, utility, utility vehicle can speed up free wheel uh, going down a slope, you know, engine or clutch braking effect is, is minimal, okay? So you're, like I said, they, they, the engine doesn't help you downshift in a vehicle like this. It does help, it's not a, it's not like a manual truck or a manual car where you can downshift it and it really helps, right? So you need to, <clears throat> you need to make sure that you are still in gear um, for that because it still will help slow that vehicle down. Don't take it out of gear. Don't put it in neutral. Um, sit in the center of the seat. A lot of these things we've talked about. Okay, don't start and stop suddenly on a hill, um, whether you're going uphill or downhill. Uh, if the vehicle does lose power, lock the parking brake, hold the vehicle on the slope, maintain the direction of travel, and release the brake slowly back and straight down the hill while maintaining control. Okay, so the parking brake will, will engage um, and just use that as you back yourself down the hill in a controlled manner. Okay. Driving across the slope, you know, reduce your speed, stay alert. <clears throat> um, once again, riding on a soft terrain, front vehicles can go up a hill, they can lose, they can lose traction. So you just need to be uh, uh, aware of that. Okay, when you're um, and you're going up an incline, uh, you know, the way that that vehicle shifts and those, those tires can come off the ground and then you don't have that traction, just things to think about. Checking your wheel hardware, right? <clears throat> when you get in your vehicle, you know, in the morning or in the afternoon or whatever the case is, you don't, uh, you don't check your lug nuts. You know what I mean? It's not something you do. Um, you know, you may look and see if, if tires flat, tires low, um, you know, which is something that you should do on a vehicle like this as well. Um, <clears throat> but you have to, um, you need to make sure that you're checking the, um, checking your, your, your lug nuts, your wheel hardware on a machine like this, because it is going over harder terrain. Those tires and those wheels are taking more of a beating than you are just driving down the road, okay? Wear the appropriate clothing. Um, make sure you have your helmet on. Make sure you have the proper proper fitting um, outerwear on, right? You know, I mean, if it's cold out, you're going to wear a jacket, but make sure if you have a jacket on that your seatbelt is, is going to protect you, right? You can, um, there's the locking mechanism in the seatbelt. You can, you can check it as you, as you put that seatbelt on and as you connect the seatbelt, <clears throat> you know, make sure it's, make sure it's snug, make sure it fits right, okay? Uh, make sure you have proper boots on. Um, you know, you're, you're still you're still going out in the woods. You're still going through this rough terrain. You have to get out. You need to have the you need to have the right the right equipment. Do not modify a machine like this. They, they, you, you know, if you if you do modify a machine, uh, or you do change parts, or you do do those types of things on a machine like this, you know, make sure that it's uh, in the owner's manual and it's manufacturer. Uh, approved, you know, it's it's whether that's a part or it's approved in the modification. Okay, a lot of these will have governors on it. They'll have set speeds on it, and you can modify that. You can do it, but you know, make sure you read the owner's manual. And make sure, you know, a, 
<clears throat> Kawasaki mule that's set from the factory at 15 miles an hour, you know, you open it up to go 40, I mean, you know, you're, you're asking for trouble. So, you know, you need to just pay attention to those types of things. Uh, you know, once again, if you're changing parts, um, make sure that there are, <coughs> if it's a John Deere, you don't have to put a John Deere back on it. Just make sure it is compatible with a John Deere. Those, and it's very important on a machine like this because if something doesn't fit properly and you take it through these rough terrains and you take a, you know, and it takes the beating that these machines take, you know, it's going to show up and, and, and that's safety um, and, and that's your safety on the line or your, uh, your working partner or whatever it is, right? So that's you guys that um, are, are at risk. Once again, tire safety, uh, you know, important on a machine like this. Make sure you're not overinflated tires, underinflated tires. Make sure the tire pressure is correct. Make sure you're checking the lug nuts. You know, you're, you're, you're taking this machine off-roading, um, through dips, dunderoos, blah, 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 right? It's, you know, th those, those wheels and those tires are um, under more stress than your normal tire driving down the road. So you just need to look at those, <clears throat> inspect them, make sure you're, you're taking care of it properly. Okay, a little bit about the servicing. I'm not going to get into detail on all these types of things. Um, you know, 50, 100, 200, 400, 800, 1,000 hour, <clears throat> those are different things. Those are, you know, you're talking still oil, air cam filters, um, you know, all, all of the normal types of things. Brakes would be in those aspects, all the normal servicing thing. Okay, read the owner's operating, read the owner's manual, the operating manual, figure out what are those, what are those intervals and what, what you have to do. <clears throat> the unique part of a, Utility vehicle um, is the first eight hours, which they call that break-in period. Okay, so what they'll do after the break-in period <clears throat> is is they'll go in and they'll they'll check all the all the tightness of all the bolts. Okay, and they'll make sure nothing's loose, all those things. So when you when you buy one of these, you need to go drive it, right? Don't, don't go over the top, you know, but drive it the way that it's supposed to be driven. Okay, drive it over. Drive it in the in the rough terrain, <clears throat> drive it in the dirt, all those types of things. Because when you take it in for the break-in period checkup, you know if anything's loosened enough, that's when they need to figure that out, right? And that's what's going to happen. If you don't do any of that through the first eight hours and you just drive it down the road and it's not really doing anything, you know, then when you drive it out um, to drive it the way that it's supposed to be driven or in an area where it was supposed to be driven, you know now you're now you're putting yourself at risk. So that's the big thing about these utility vehicles. Um, you know, the break-in period is just that. Drive it, drive it the way that it's meant to be driven, off-roading, through rough terrain, um, and then check it after those eight hours and make sure that there's nothing loose. And if there is, then that's when they fix it. That's when they figure those things out. So just something different, something to think about. <clears throat> okay, a couple apps um, going into the operating aspects. Um, you know, what are your daily operating checklist, right? We, we have that on any of the equipment. Checking your safety systems, your tire pressure, your fuels, your engine oil. Is there any leaks? Um, checking your brakes, checking your CV boots. CV boots are important on a machine like this. Um, you know, it's the boot that connects the axle to the wheel, right? So it is, and it holds the, you know, the, the lubrication for that. Um, you know, you have, them, you have them on your car as well, but it allows the, the wheel to turn, and that axle to, to turn. Um, they break on your car, uh, they rip open, they leak, <clears throat> they allow dirt in it, can affect, you know, the longevity of your axles uh, and your bearings on that portion of your uh, wheel for your car. Same thing here, same exact concept. The only thing is, is you're running this machine through the woods, through the thicket, uh, through the mud, through all these types of things. Chances of these CV boots being damaged is greater. So you need to check them more often uh, and pay attention to it. Okay. Checking coolant, braking level, um, air restrictive indicator, loose hardware, seatbelt function. Okay. You have a shoulder harness in a utility vehicle like this. 
Most of them are not going to have a lap belt. They're going to have a complete shoulder harness. Okay. Um, there is a locking mechanism in that, so you can check it. You know, connect the seat belt normally, pull on it, make sure it's right, <clears throat> make sure there's no wear and tear on the damp on the on the seat belt itself, prettiness, whatever the case is. So going into um, vehicle load capacities, so we have a gross vehicle weight that's related to a utility vehicle, just like we did on the on the on the trucks and the trailers, right? Okay. So what are the different components? One of the things that I want to point out. On a, on a utility vehicle like this is, is you have this on the, on, the, on a truck in your trailer, and we talked about it week two. We went through it, and it's important. I don't want to say it's more important on a utility vehicle like this. You need to pay attention more to the weights, right? So <clears throat> the weights are not going to be as great on a, on a vehicle like this. So the things that are going to come in to a factor more on a vehicle like this you don't really factor in on a on a on a truck and a trailer, right? You don't you don't, you're not gonna factor in that your chains weigh a hundred pounds on a um, on a on a truck and a trailer that has a seven thousand pound um, rating, right? You're not you're not you're not thinking about it. it's a hundred pounds, you get seven thousand, right? You, you you got a lot of room to spare. On a vehicle like this, you know, that hundred pounds could put you over. Okay, so the things you have to think about, right, is you, right? I mean, you gotta think about you. You weigh 150, 200 pounds. You only have an 800 pound capacity. That's 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 a big chunk of it, right? That's a that's a large chunk of it. So you are are a portion of that. Okay, the the cargo box um, it, it is a portion of it. Your your load itself is a portion of it. Um, if you're towing a load. The, the, the tongue weight of that load, uh, the load itself, um, all those things are um, important. You know, the cargo box may not have been installed by the manufacturer when you bought it. So if you added a cargo box to it, now you put more weight on that vehicle. Okay, so you need to, you need to take that into account. <clears throat> when you don't, when you have a vehicle of this size, the payload capacity is not going to be as great. The vehicle weighting, uh, the gross vehicle weight um, and the gross vehicle weight rating are not going to be as great as you, as you are. So your room for error in a vehicle like this is a lot slimmer. Okay, so you have to account for more things. I don't want to say more things. I shouldn't say it that way. You need to account for things that you necessarily don't account for um, on, on, a, on a larger vehicle in that aspect. Okay, that's that's the that's the gist of what I want you guys to get out of it. But there's there, there's all these components, um, there's all these components that, that that make that up. It makes that up <clears throat> on a regular vehicle as well. It's just highlighted um, here because you don't have you don't have the, the larger number um, to make up for uh, what those components actually uh, add up to be. Okay, so loading the cargo box. Here's the load. Um, here's the load guard that we talked about earlier, right? So he has the, the 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 cargo here below the load guard. That way, if this shifts forward, it doesn't go on him; it hits the load guard. If this cargo was up higher above that, <clears throat> this load shifts forward, it comes back on the driver or the passenger, or both, right? So you need to pay attention to to that type of thing. Okay, anchor it in, load it in. There's going to be maximum capacities, all those types of things. When you're empty in the cargo box, okay, when you lift up that cargo box, <clears throat> it's going to shift the center of gravity of your vehicle. Okay, so if you're close to the edge of something, and you lift that cargo box up, and that shifts back a little bit, and it pulls you down off of that off of that edge. Something you need to pay attention to. Okay, so when you lift that up, <clears throat> and you dump it. You know, your, your center of gravity has changed. It is going to change when you do that. So it needs to be on a, on a good solid ground, allowing for that little bit um, of, of center of gravity to change, okay? So when you're towing loads and we're operating, uh, these are some of the things that we, we, we talked about earlier, right? You know, you're not gonna see this type of, 
uh, slope, um, whether it's an incline or decline, you know, out on I-40, right? You know, you're going to see this, on a, you know, when you're when you're in the woods, when you're back somewhere, and you're and you're trying to get this load in here. So these are the types of things with a utility vehicle. That's why, you know, the the, the type of hitch, making sure that it's that it's mounted properly. Uh, making sure it's connected properly, it's not overloaded, it's tied in there properly. All those things are, are highlighted when you're operating a vehicle like this. It's the same safety process and the same safety thought of a truck and trailer on the road, but it's highlighted because of the terrain that you're doing. You're putting more, more stress on that load being tied down, on the hitch, on the connection, all those types of things um, are being more strained when it is when it is on a on, on a an, an uneven terrain, which is where you are going to be operating these machines. <clears throat> so our our um, they don't work. Um, my link's not working. Let's see. I can get us a video. It's a video of ours. Okay. Um, this is our this is our gator at the school. Um, you know, kind of get a look of it. Of what you have, right? You got a couple different buttons. Um, you know, you need to know what they all do, just like any other machine. Okay, you have your you have your rollover protection cage. We got doors. Um, you know, all these all these types of things on, on this vehicle, and we'll go over those in lab a little bit too. Um, let's see what else? You know, getting into the fun of it, right? So this is a, it's a fun vehicle, right? I mean, it can do different things, but as you're going up these slopes and up these different terrains, you know, there's safety mechanisms that you have to have um, thought of and, and, and understand um, the dangers that, that, that exist with them, okay? So I'm not going to go through specifically everything on this aspect of this, of this video, um, just to try to show you what ours, what we have, and um, that's the look of it, and we'll We'll play around with it a little bit um, on Monday. So our discussion question you know, what, what, what factor determine the maximum load capacity of a vehicle? Okay, what, what, what is that? Um, we talked about it. And why is it important to pay attention to the weight on a vehicle and not just a utility vehicle, right? I mean, we have, a, we have the weight on the vehicle. Um, we have a weight on any vehicle, right? Not just this one, okay? So, um, what, what, what makes that up? What makes up the, the, those factors? You know, we talked about them, you know, in the, in the slides here. Um, you know, and why is, it, why is it so important to pay attention to how much the weight is on any vehicle, not just a vehicle like this? But, you know, it, it's, it's more, it's highlighted more in a vehicle like this too, right? So what are those factors? Um, what determines that gross vehicle weight? Um, What's the maximum load capacity? What determines all that type of stuff? You know, what 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 goes into it? What is your thought process? Uh, what 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 do you need to pay attention to? What number do you need to add up? All those things. Let's discuss it. Let's discuss why it's important on a vehicle like this. What's different compared to another vehicle? All those types of things. I think it's good to to talk about them, um, to understand it, and then we'll have a better understanding. Um, of what happens, you know, when you, we're all going to be in a situation if you're working in this field at the end of a day, end of a week, end of a job, 
um, to where you're going to load up a bunch of material on your truck to try to get it all out of there, your truck and your trailer to try to get it all out of there so you don't have to come back. You know, what I want us to realize is, is there are limits. <clears throat> there are safety aspects to it. Um, so when that time does come, you know, these, these thoughts come up in our mind. You know, that's, that's, that's the gist of, of, of trying to get this discussion question. Other than that, I hope you guys have a good week and we will see you on Monday.